Javier can see the future of his romantic relationships from the first kiss itself. When he accidentally kisses his best friend's girlfriend, Lucia, things get more complicated. Javier knows you can tell by the first kiss if that person is meant for you. His girlfriend, Berta, turns up late at the bar. She's angry with her boss for giving her extra work on a Friday night. But Javier looks distant, and hasn't even touched the nuts. Sylvia walks over to greet Javier and discusses how great he is. But she's upset he randomly dumped her one day after pretending he knows about the future. It happened at the same bar on a Friday night, so it was packed and she couldn't make a scene. He hadn't had any nuts that day too, and paid for the bill in advance. Berta is sure he's dumping her, but things are great between them. Sylvia explains that he does this with everyone, because he claims to know there's no future for them. Javier remembers his very first kiss when he was 16 years old. When he kisses a girl during Spin the Bottle, he can see scenes of his life with her. But one day, she kisses another girl and it's over. He doesn't understand it, but the scenes from his vision slowly start happening in real life. He gets scared as he gets closer to the girl, because he is afraid of how it will end. He dates her for three years, but it ends just like he saw in his vision. He keeps dating other women to confirm his fears. He's on a date when he gets a vision of him almost dying because of drowning. When the kiss is over, he makes some excuse to get out of going to the beach with her. In the present, he still claims to just know things will not work out. Berta throws her drink at him before leaving. His best friend, Roberto, thinks Javier should use his talent to find a bestseller. His colleague, Carla, thinks from their conversation that they're about to go bankrupt. But Javier assures her Roberto is a podiatrist, and doesn't know anything about books. A truck has just returned 500 copies of a book Javier vouched for. He doesn't like the pessimism he is getting from his colleagues, and asks Carla and Simon to leave. Roberto reminds Javier about dinner that night, where his girlfriend, Lucia, is bringing a date for him. Javier meets fellow publishers at an event, who are worried about his business not doing well. He claims he's in talks with some investors, and it's looking up for him. He's expecting to move into a new office soon and be successful by September. He is releasing a new book by Sansols Duran which is expected to be like her early literature. They notice Sansol's there, but Javier thinks she should be writing at home instead. She gets very anxious while writing these days, so she took a pill and convinced herself to come to the event. She gets irritated when he asks how the book is coming along. But Javier has a schedule as a publisher and is worried about that. When she claims she could have signed another publisher, Javier knows that's not true. Sansol's used to be a huge hit with her initial novels, but is now a disaster. She was the voice of her generation, but didn't take the fame well. At one of her readings, Sansol's gets angry when a fan asks her to sign her first book. She thinks it's insulting to discuss her first book at an event for her second book. She writes a rude message for the fan, and asks everyone to leave and tend to disrespect her. After having one drink at the event, Sansol starts singing and gets rude to everyone. But Javier knows they are both each other's last hope. If he can't get her to finish the book on time, he knows he won't have a future either. At dinner, Javier tries to be polite with Lucia's friend, Esther. Lucia has heard about issues with his publishing house from Roberto. She suggests he can try a focus group, where people discuss his books to get more engagement. Javier doesn't like that idea, because he doesn't see his readers as consumers like she does. Before it can turn into an argument, Roberto intervenes. Esther starts crying about moving to Madrid when Javier asks her about it. Her boyfriend of seven years dumped her for a job as a prison officer abroad. Esther suggests they can get another drink, but Roberto has an early morning. Lucia is upset he never wants to go out, but he asks all of them to enjoy without him. Esther takes them to a bar where she gets very drunk and starts dancing. Javier plans to leave after finishing his beer, but Lucia promised Esther a date and doesn't let him go. Javier already knows Lucia doesn't like him, which is why she wants this date for Esther. She wants a selfish man afraid of commitment to be Esther's rebound, and Javier seems perfect. But when she notices how drunk Esther is, even she asks her to leave. Esther takes them to the dance floor and kisses Lucia. She then kisses Javier, who knows their date will be over soon when she pukes on him after the party. Esther forces Lucia and Javier to kiss. This time, his vision is very different and long. He can see a proper future with Lucia, with two children and a happy relationship that keeps growing. When Esther separates them, Javier is shocked because he wasn't expecting this. They know they need to stop Esther, who pukes on the floor because Javier moves away in time. He makes tea for them after Lucia tucks her in bed. Lucia apologizes for the things she said to him at the bar. He believes it's good she was sincere, and prefers that to what she says in front of Roberto. She knows Javier doesn't like her either, and asks him about it. He thinks it has something to do with the fact that he stopped hanging out with Roberto so much when she moved in with him. She clarifies that Roberto doesn't have time for her either. When he's tired from work, he just wants to have beer and watch movies. When she's too close to him, Javier notices the same painting from the vision. He feels disturbed and leaves. Carla recommends signing Santiago, because his work is very exciting. Even Simon thinks it'll be a good idea to consider other authors. But Javier is very particular about the kind of authors he wants. Lucia comes by to the office, and seems more awkward than him. She wonders if something weird happened between them last night. 
She wants to make sure he's not making a big deal of their kiss, and wants to continue being normal with him. She also gets excited by Santiago's flyer, since she has read all his books. She hopes he is thinking about singing him. But Javier has no idea about his books, so Lucia takes him to a talk by Santiago. He's a war writer, who describes his personal experience. On Lucia's insistence, he approaches Santiago after the talk. He introduces Lucia as a huge admirer. He admits he has a small publishing house and wants to publish his book. Santiago can tell Javier has never read his books, but he prefers small publishers to big ones. He is fascinated by Lucia, who reminds him of a woman he met on his travels. Lucia asks him to sign a copy for her, so he asks about Javier's publishing house too. Santiago has no interest in signing him, because he recognizes how bad the publishing house is. Javier feels humiliated, but Lucia thinks it's important to make mistakes so you learn from them. She thinks it would be boring if everything went perfectly. For her, the bumps in the road are important to understand what works. But he doesn't like the struggle and prefers everything to go smoothly. He recommends her a book about a couple who split. They discuss if the couple would have gone through the relationship if they knew it would end badly. But Javier knows sometimes it's inevitable. He's drinking alone when the bartender, Ariana, comments on how he gets into trouble with girls and at work. She has heard him talking on the phone, and claims it's part of her job. This is how she knows a customer needs more beer. She's an actor, who also sings, paints and does performance art. She crosses the bar to sit next to him, and asks him to hold her hands. She stares at him for a long time, which makes him uncomfortable. She thinks it usually takes an hour and a half for someone to open up to her. She thinks Javier is also a reaching a point where he wants to share something. When he claims he's hungry, she offers to make crepes for him. They're in her ex-boyfriend's house, from where she's trying to steal her crepe maker. He needs it because it's important to his mother, but Ariana grabs it and runs away with Javier behind her. When they reach a hiding spot, she starts laughing and tries to kiss him. He stops her because he likes someone and thinks he might be in love. She checks her watch and feels victorious that it took an hour and a half, but he finally admits how he feels. He feels bad because it's his best friend's girlfriend, but he knows she won't be happy with him. Ariana thinks his friend deserves to know whatever he knows. Roberto is looking for a new penthouse apartment. He wants to get married and plan a future with kids. Javier tries to distract him with travel plans, but Roberto thinks he's settled in his practice and wants to move ahead with Lucia. But Roberto knows there's something on his mind. Javier thinks they fight all the time, when they used to be happy earlier. Roberto thinks it's normal for couples to fight, and that he has a routine he has set with Lucia. Javier doesn't think Lucia will be fine with that routine based on what he knows about her. Roberto admits he's a lot like his dad when it comes to relationships. His dad won the lottery with his mom, till she left him. Now, he just watches TV and drinks beer all day. Javier thinks he can avoid making the same mistake and improve his life. Roberto loves this advice, and thanks Javier for encouraging him. Lucia is working when Roberto comes to her office. He claims it's urgent, and bends down on one knee to ask her to marry him. Javier tries to get Roberto out of the bathroom, but he's miserable about Lucia's rejection. Javier reminds him of an earlier breakup, but it took three years for him to get over her. He thinks he missed obvious clues about Lucia not being happy with him. Javier tries to comfort him, but he gets more depressed about Lucia staying with Esther till she comes over to get her stuff. Javier begs Lucia not to leave Roberto, because he can't handle it. But she has thought about it more, and she is sure she can't marry him. She also never wanted a new apartment like he did. Javier blames himself for the sudden proposal, even if he told Roberto to do the opposite. But Lucia thinks it's more about the issues they already had, since they want different things. He seriously asks her one more time if this is not about him, and she assures him. Esther comes back to her place and seems glad to see Javier there. He wants to leave, but she asks Lucia to take a walk. She takes Lucia aside to explain that she's in a worse position, and really needs to hook up with Javier. Lucia thinks it's a bad idea, but Javier has already left during this discussion. Javier gets a manuscript from Sansol's weeks after it was due, and starts reading it. It seems oddly familiar, and he can't tell what the issue is. Carla suggests he needs to get a fresher point of view, so he agrees to do Lucia's focus group. When the members complain about the book being too long with typos, he already thinks this was a mistake. But he gets alert when someone mentions there is an issue with the ending. They feel like it gives a good build up till the very end, and then falls flat. They all agree they will recommend it if the ending has a surprise element. Javier thanks Lucia, because he's surprised this actually worked. They're making out in Esther's house, and can't resist each other. They feel guilty about Roberto, but Javier feels like this was bound to happen. She doesn't want this to be a big deal, and thinks they should hide this from Roberto. She feels very weird this happened with Javier, but she assures herself this is a random hookup going nowhere. Javier already knows where it's going, and they start hanging out a lot more. They visit the same place from his vision where he fell, and he's more alert now. She shows him her new place, and they can't keep their hands off each other. He's walking down the street with a plant when he notices Ariana with her dog. They catch up and she offers to get him a beer. She has been fired from the bar, and he's scared of finding another one of her exes in this apartment. 
She takes him to the scaffolding, where she rants about how small Madrid is. She wants to move to Australia when she gets more money. She has traveled to a lot of places and done all sorts of jobs. This current house is also not hers, but it belongs to a friend. He backpacks for six months and lives for the other six in Madrid. She asks about his friend's girlfriend, and he shares that they're not together anymore. She is not officially with Javier yet, but he is sure she will be. He can't explain it, but he seems confident from the first kiss itself that things will work out. She teases him about finding reasons to kiss her. She asks him to demonstrate what he means. He kisses her and just notices them kissing in the present. He finds it strange that he couldn't figure anything out. But he feels like when you meet the perfect woman, any other woman's future doesn't mean anything. She feels like this thing he's doing is kind of working for her, but he assures her she is not the woman for him. He thanks her and rushes out of the apartment. He finds Roberto in his office, who notices Javier is carrying Lucia's favorite plant. Javier insists it's just for decoration. He has been trying to contact Roberto, but he apologizes for wanting to spend some time alone. Roberto is a mess and can't seem to get over Lucia. Javier understands breakups are hard and offers to take him for a drive. But when Roberto sits down, his screen lights up with a photo of him and Lucia kissing. He tries to get Roberto out of there by making some excuse. But when Roberto looks back, he notices the photo and walks out. Javier follows him to come clean about everything. He explains they kissed for the first time by chance when they went for dinner with Esther. He saw it and knew Lucia is the one for him. Roberto doesn't want to deal with someone like him who went behind his back. He never believed in Javier's first kiss stories, and only went along with it because it was funny. He also supported him because he thought they were friends. Roberto thinks he will make Lucia unhappy like everyone else. But the next few months are the happiest for Javier. He keeps spending more time with Lucia, and even moves in with her. They're always in sync and passionate about each other. One day, she comes home with a peace lily and asks if he wants to see the exhibit. He refuses, because he thinks it won't be nice for her. She still comes to kiss him when he looks in a bad mood. But he claims he has work and picks up a call from Carla. She has reread Sansol's book and tells him why he felt the book seems familiar. Sansol has plagiarized her books, and he asks how he can publish it. She initially denies it, but admits she copied some work. She doesn't know what young people want these days, and she has no other stories to tell. She claims something used to happen to her before to make it work. He brings Ariana to her as a muse. She has traveled the world, and Javier thinks her stories can help Sansols get a fresh perspective. He comes back home and knows this is the day he gets the surprise. Lucia hears him whispering surprise, and seems confused. But when she asks him to follow her, as expected, people come out to surprise him on his birthday. After dinner, Lucia is upset because he already seemed to know about the surprise. He claims he saw Ruben's car parked downstairs. She gives him two tickets to Marrakesh because he loves the place. She once heard him tell Roberto it was his last vacation with his parents. But from his expressions, she can tell he already knows. She wonders if she's that boring and predictable. She loves giving surprises to keep the relationship fun but it always seems like Javier already knows. She doesn't want their relationship to become monotonous, because she feels that's how it ends. He already seems to know about the hotel she booked, which he blames on intuition. He then starts giving specific details about their trip, claiming that it's something that usually happens there. He claims they'll walk around Medina to get a rug he could get for 100, but she will force him to pay 200 to win. He will recommend a dish, but she won't listen and order a Caesar salad instead. They will then spend the rest of the trip with food poisoning in bed. At the airport, she'll get a magazine which mentions a celebrity leaving her boyfriend. She thinks this makes it sound like he doesn't want to go with her. She decides to go for the trip with Esther, because she thinks they need this time apart. Ariana is discussing her life with Sansols, which she finds a way to rephrase. Ariana also reminds her she's the mayor of a very small town in Australia. The stories keep getting more interesting, and Sansols loves her. Javier is glad it's working out for them, but she thinks he likes her too. When he mentions he has a girlfriend, Sansols seems surprised. Javier calls Lucia in Marrakesh, who can't hear him properly because she's in a market. When she hears Esther asking for a rug, she remembers something Javier said and cuts the phone. When Lucia suggests if they can get it for 100 euros, the man agrees. This freaks her out and she makes Esther leave too. Javier sits down to attend Ariana's performance for the first time. He joins her on stage because of her clear gestures. He sits on the chair in front of her while she performs, but it all seems very uncomfortable to him. She finally asks him to hold her hands and brings a knife out of nowhere. He is genuinely scared at this point, and at the end, she cuts the rope to make blood fall on him. Javier gets changed and wonders if the stuff she used will wash off. She claims it's real blood, and he is now sure she is very deranged. When she wipes out blood from his face, he leans in to kiss her. She reminds him he has a girlfriend, and asks him to realize the importance of commitment. He claims he's confused because he can see everything clearly with Lucia, but not Ariana. That night, Javier realizes he doesn't want to let Lucia go. He decides to surprise her by finally getting Santiago to sign her book. But when he goes to a reading, he finds Roberto talking to him. Ariana thinks it's her fault she was very friendly with Javier, and got too close to him. 
She knows it's a bad idea to pursue him, and Sansouls calms her down. Ariana also knows she has no idea about true love, and asks what the book is really about. Neither of them has an answer, because the book only mentions her travels. Sansouls admits all these adventures bore her. She's not in that place in her life anymore. Ariana urges her to describe what she's feeling. Sansouls is at that stage where she gets paranoid about writing, and wants to distract her mind by buying things she doesn't need. When she has one drink at a party, she gets too drunk and messes things up. She just wants to go to a place where there are no writers and editors from her world. She tells Ariana about this guy in Romania she visits every other weekend. He's repairing the house her father left her, but lack of communication keeps leading to hilarious moments. These incidents make her feel like she wants to be a normal woman more than a famous writer. Ariana realizes she shouldn't be doing it, and throws away all of her notes about her. She thinks Sansol should be writing about her own experience. Santiago talks about life in a war zone, and thinks of Roberto as a hero. Roberto explains how even in remote locations, the health of the feet should be the major focus. Roberto has become a big name helping international cooperation from being a simple podiatrist. Roberto notices Javier in the crowd and momentarily forgets what he was saying. But he claims he reached this point in life after a heartbreak. He shares that his girlfriend left him for his best friend. Javier makes a general observation about whether it's still a problem when two people are meant to be together. Roberto claims the argument has no point when both of them were sleeping with each other for months behind his back. They get into an argument, after which Javier claims he shouldn't have got involved. He never wanted to hurt Roberto, and feels horrible about it. Roberto admits his life is much better since then, because he travels a lot and helps people. But he still loves her, so he's happy to see she is happy with Javier. He assures Roberto he only came there to get an autograph. Roberto finally forgives him and hugs him. When Lucia gets back, Javier can tell something is wrong. She shares that on the first day of her trip, she found this rug she could get for 100. But she moved away because she didn't like it anymore. The next day, she wanted to order a Caesar salad. But she didn't, because his voice was in her head. Esther had it and she was fine. It was the best trip she had, and there were a lot of fun and tragic moments. They got robbed and took some awful mud baths. She also shows him her copy of the magazine which claims the celebrity is marrying her boyfriend, unlike what he predicted. She thinks life is much more fun if you let it surprise you. She also wants to move the couches around since she needs some change. Javier remembers this is exactly what Lucia also did the last time she was unhappy in her relationship with Roberto. That night, Javier discusses that he met Roberto, who seems like a different person. Javier leaves a message for Lucia right outside the restaurant she is at. He claims he can't make it, and asks her to have fun with Roberto. She is about to leave when Roberto reaches there too. They exchange pleasantries, but Lucia feels awkward because Javier is not there. She apologizes to him, but Roberto thinks that doesn't sound sincere. She gets up to leave again, because she doesn't want to be humiliated. Roberto feels bad for how he's acting, because he was also expecting Javier to be there. They get comfortable, and he asks if she's happy with Javier. She teases him about his beard, and he explains how different his life is now. He closes the clinic and keeps traveling. He also never bought that penthouse, because he doesn't want anything holding him back. Javier keeps watching them, and is glad they're making up. Lucia claims it's a little weird with Javier, because it's very hard to surprise him. Roberto reminds her of his surprise, when he asked her to marry him. Lucia thinks that gesture was cute, but it wasn't the right time. She asks for a hug, and they admit they missed each other. Javier thinks he finally found the love story he was looking for, but it's not his. He secretly gifts Ariana tickets to Australia. He changes his attitude, and starts going to work events to exchange notes. He realizes no one has any idea what they're doing. He knows he hasn't released a good book in a long time, and it's because of his own prejudices. But when he reads Sansol's latest book, he is confident it will be a hit. At the book's success party, Roberto and Lucia are back together. Sansols thinks the book is a hit because of Javier, who saw something in her. She asks them to celebrate his day and his achievements. As a surprise for him, Sansols points towards Ariana at the party. Ariana explains she never went to Australia, because she didn't know what she would do there again. But she used the money from the tickets to self-produce a podcast. She starts leaving the party, but Javier thinks if she was here they could have seen each other. She wants him to know she knows when she likes someone, and doesn't need to see the future to take the plunge. They stare at each other for a long time and remember the moment at the bar where she held his hands. She leaves, but he follows her outside to let her know he will go wherever she takes him. 